so I decided to do something a little chaotic. About a month ago, we checked out the first SpongeBob web games that came out between 1999 and 2001. Since then, we've taken a walk through history and reviewed some essential Flash games in order. Let's give a recap. The early SpongeBob games were fairly simple and didn't have the most complicated premises. They had a darker art style that matched the tone of the first season. Some of the original games were developed by smashing ideas, but in 2001, everything would change when two particular companies entered the picture. These were Jet City Studios and iTunes. iTunes released the popular games Crater Crossing and Flipper Flop, while Jet City Studios put out some surprisingly detailed ones like Bikini Bottom or Bust, then eventually Bumper Subs in 2002. Meanwhile, we would see the start of SpongeBob's involvement in Nickelodeon's Nick Arcade series. You know, the one with the commercials where someone would do a bunch of stuff and say Nick.com, followed by someone else saying, <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants Saves the Krusty Krab was developed on the popular 3D Groove engine, and it was an interesting game to say the least. But in 2003, iTunes would release the first SpongeBob fighting game with Karate Contest. While it was decently liked at the time, it wouldn't be until decades later that the game would see a resurgence in popularity. This is because a couple sprites would go on to be used in one of SpongeBob's most recognizable memes. Hey, what'd I tell ya? iTunes was a very impactful company. But we left off on that one, so let's see where things went from here. This year would also introduce an important company to the SpongeBob scene. One of the most essential developers that almost any Flash game enthusiast will recognize. Guess who it is? Welcome aboard, Sarbakin. Let's see what you made for us. SpongeBob's Pizza Toss is very fondly remembered, but it also has a complicated history. While it came out in 2003, it would later be reworked in 2009. But even when it first came out, there were a couple different versions. There was one made specifically for the Nick Arcade, and one that could be played normally online. Even that one was later revised. The differences are minor, but it's strange how we got four different versions of the same Flash game. But let's take a look at how it is in its basic form. It's based on the game Paperboy, which many of us remember as being rather rage-inducing. While this doesn't reach quite the same level of frustration, it can get irritating sometimes. You control SpongeBob and you have to deliver Krusty Krab pizzas to a seemingly infinite number of customers. Kind of like in the episode Pizza Delivery, but with a far more efficient method. Sort of. Everyone under the sea wants to stop you from delivering these. You're on a bike and the streets are about as unsafe as they can get. Wait a minute. Is that who I think it is? Fried ice cream. That's right, it's everyone's favorite background character with an unhealthy obsession with fried ice cream. It's been a while, Morty. But he's trying to stop you from delivering your pizzas, so I guess you gave him regular ice cream or something. Because you're constantly moving, you have to hit a button at the right time to throw a pizza to a customer who pokes out through a window or a door. You press the spacebar to throw a pizza high, but you hold it and press control to throw it to the side. It's a little confusing. And with how high speed this game is, I often find myself hitting the wrong button because I don't take the time to think. Also, we can't talk about this game without mentioning the music. Just listen to it. <laughs> Now that's an amusing tune. You also have to collect power-ups. You can run out of pizzas, so Spongebob just picks up more on the side of the road. Imagine if a regular pizza place did that. You order from Domino's or something, but they're all out, so the driver just finds an abandoned one laying on the street and brings it to you. Actually, it all makes sense. That's why everyone's trying to stop you. They're aware of your unsanitary business practices and trying to prevent customers from consuming the stuff. We're the real bad guys here. At the end of each stage, you reach one of your friends. Look at Sandy. Does your pizza delivery really merit such an excessive applause? The game is decent, but takes some skill and even a bit of practice. And like I said, there are different versions with slight variations. In the Nick Arcade version, your pizzas have different ingredients and you need to throw the customers the kind of pizza they ask for. In the 2009 version, you just press control to throw a pizza rather than having to hold the spacebar. And in the slightly revised version, ignore the missing textures, you have the option to send your score right there next to the timer. So yeah, the differences aren't that substantial, but still, if you like the idea of a Spongebob version of Paperboy, give this one a try. But there was one other big game that came out in 2003. But actually, to fully understand it, we need to go all the way back to 1998. 
the developer's game house created a tile matching series called Collapse. It had three games between then and 2004, but eventually they had an official collab with Spongebob. I also have to take a moment to show you the titles of each game in order. How's this for getting yourself chronologically confused? But this is a classic. Spongebob is at the side of the screen, watching you try to match three or more blocks of the same color as new rows fly up from beneath them. You can even see how many lines you have left to clear under your score. There are even bombs that can blow up all blocks of the same color. You might feel the need to clear all the matching colors on the board as quickly as possible, and you do get a bonus for clearing the board, but sometimes it's best to wait for the blocks at the bottom to appear so you can potentially increase your score with more of the same color. You can play it as strategically as you so desire. This is really fun, and it's cool to see the new power-ups that appear in later levels, but there's actually a very similar game that came out the next year. Can you guess what it's based on? Cereal. Yeah, a Spongebob game based on the Spongebob cereal. What will they think of next? Remember the Spongebob Marshmallow cereal? Regrettably, I've never had it, but thankfully we can play this game and feel the same amount of joy. It's called Bubble Trouble Cereal Game. Now the music in this is surprisingly awesome. is very similar to Collapse, but with the character-shaped marshmallows inside bubbles instead of blocks. If you try to match one or two, the one you clicked on turns into a regular cereal piece. They're supposed to be jellyfish. I guess this game isn't shying away from telling you that the marshmallows are good and the regular cereal pieces are bad. And once you lose, you have to answer a trivia question about the cereal box to continue. Darn, I didn't study my cereal. But as a little tie-in, this is pretty cute. Nothing spectacular. But there's another game that came out this year that involved bursting bubbles. But before we get to that, you remember what year this is, don't you? That's right, 2004. You know what came out in 2004? The SpongeBob SquarePants Movie. With this, we received an influx of movie-based content. The SpongeBob 3D Movie game came out this year, along with 3D Pinball Panic. We looked at those in previous videos, but let's check out some other movie stuff. This is Bubble Busting Game, made by Sarbakin. Hey! Who blew this bubble? Oh no, he talks. This is based on the scene from the movie where Spongebob and Patrick visit Thug Tug, specifically after they unleash bubbles and cause an uproar because only bubble-blowing babies blow bubbles. Hey, do you think these guys would get along with the bubble poppin' boys? You have to burst all the bubbles on the screen to keep Spongebob from laughing in amusement. The meter on the right tells you how far he is from laughing. It's pretty easy, and they give you a lot of time. On the harder stages, they give you a share of power-ups that either freeze or blow up everything on the screen. If you care about your speakers or your ears, you do not want that meter to rise. Give this a listen. But again, it isn't too hard. Pretty okay. But keeping in the spirit of the Spongebob movie, let's check out Revealing Image. Um, that's quite a title there. I already saw those on the Super Sponge development CD. I don't need to see them again. You're given a hint about a certain character and you have to guess who it is. Oh, this is just unfair. Way too hard. Um, uh, come on, who flips Krabby Patties at the Krusty Krab? Uh, Mindy? Darn, that wasn't right. Let me try again. Hmm, it's gotta be Mindy. No? No way. That can't be right. It's definitely Mindy. Oh, it was Spongebob. <laughs> never would have gotten that. But moving away from the movie, there's another big game that came out this year called Sponge Seek. This was made by Smashing Ideas, who continued to work on Spongebob games throughout the 2000s. This is based on Battleship and has two modes, one player and email. I think all games should have those exact two modes. And I'm sorry for this, but this sound effect is so strange that I just have to share it with you. <coughs> Anyway, let's try one player. You choose a color, then your pieces are automatically set and you have to guess where your opponent's pieces are. You drag your jellyfish to a space and try to sting them. You take out each of them one at a time and win. Just like Battleship. But email game is interesting because you set your own pieces, then you email the board to a friend to compete. Imagine playing a multiplayer Spongebob game by emailing someone back and forth. Times sure were different in the 2000s. And if things couldn't get any stranger, a sprite of AJ from Fairly Odd Parents can be found in the game's files. This belonged to a similar game called Timmy's Tile Turner. <laughs> Turner. 
But enough about that. The other big news of this year came in the form of a platformer called 3D Obstacle Odyssey. This was made by iTunes in collaboration with Retro64, but this time iTunes went by the name Snap to Play, though the game itself was a reskin of another Retro64 game, Best Friends Forever. But once again, we covered that in a previous video. But pertaining to that, there's one more game I'd like to check out in this video because I have a bit of an update to a conundrum I first brought up in my Obstacle Odyssey one and elaborated on in my Trail of the Snail video, 2005 saw the release of a Spongebob episode called Have You Seen This Snail? An episode where Gary ran away from home. The episode was heavily marketed and highly anticipated. Many of us remember it by the name Where's Gary? And a certain haunting advertisement I once saw helped to solidify that. For years, I couldn't find it anywhere. I've previously described remembering it as a white light floating across a black screen with Spongebob faintly shouting Gary's name in the background. It was then followed by the words, Where's Gary? and a clip of Spongebob crying while saying his name. But again, I couldn't find it anywhere. It almost seemed like lost media, or just something I made up. But fear not, because the YouTuber Hapax Gamma found the commercial in a compilation uploaded by Blue Frog TV. They then uploaded it to their channel, so now the entire world can see this commercial that once horrified me. Let's watch it to set the tone for the next game. So how about it? Maybe not so scary if you're an adult, but as a particularly young child with absolutely no further context, you can imagine this was a lot to take in. So now that that age-old Lucy Lilliam mystery has been resolved, let's look at the game. This is Where's Gary, one that was only ever released in the UK and taken down without warning. Nobody knows why, and it's a shame because it has a lot of effort put into it. It was made by Badger Hammer, who would go on to create Itty Octopus. Now this is an extremely fast-paced game, so you'd better prepare yourself. On the menu, you can either play all mini-games back-to-back or one at a time. The one at a time feature doesn't work for me, so let's just do them all at once. It's a compilation of 14 different games that require you to do something that involves finding Gary. Whether you're chasing him, trying to search for him through binoculars, or pretty much anything really, you have to go for the highest score possible. It's easy to accidentally skip the instructions, so you have to have at least some patience so you know what to do before they throw you into each session. Some can be really easy, and others play nasty tricks on you. Like this one that tells you to find Gary, but not just a picture of him, even though they have pictures of him all throughout the stage. The ones where you control Spongebob and try to reach Gary are also tough to figure out. It's hard to tell what you're doing wrong sometimes. This one also feels a little strange. My favorite's probably the rhythm game where you try to charm Gary by matching Squidward's notes. Though I also like the one where you trace Gary and get judged by your accuracy. You can honestly just draw whatever if you don't care about your score. There's also this pirate announcer who keeps talking and says some funny stuff. Oh, ho! That was rubbish! But yeah, there are a lot of ways to have fun here. Hmm. Yeah, this looks like Gary to me. What? What do you mean it isn't? It's pretty good. But one game is kind of dependent on chance, which I'm not a big fan of. It's a shame this got taken down, though. It might have been because the Have You Seen the Snail hype died out, but still. So that about does it for the games I wanted to cover in this video. From this point on, Spongebob Flash games would blow up and there would eventually become so many that we could barely keep track. With the Nick Arcade still going strong and Sarbacken releasing these well-received creations, Nick.com was the place to be on the internet. But no matter where they came from, many of us enjoyed playing Spongebob games when we were growing up. The ones online were easily accessible and killed countless hours for our childhood selves. I think that's amazing, and why we should appreciate these even to this day. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.